Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Artificial intelligence, cognitive function tests, early detection of neurological issues, the company's FDA clearance, and thoughts on making Alzheimer's a global health priority are the topics our guest will tackle today. He is the co-founder and CEO at Cognitivity Neurosciences. Dr. Sina Habibi is joining us today. But before we bring him on, just a quick reminder to smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hey, Sina, welcome back to The Dive. Hi. Okay, so for our audience new to the story, could you walk us through the high-level overview for Cognitivity Neurosciences? Yeah, sure. So we are um, a company which uses latest neuroscience and artificial intelligence in order to detect neurodegeneration, in particular uh, Alzheimer's disease, but we're not limited to that. Uh, it's a software as medical device and uh, it has a breakthrough technology which uses um, information processing by the brain as opposed to memory. And that's uh, what we have patented and that's what uh, we use for detecting those early subclinical changes in the brain that nobody else can pick up. So your AI-based system estimates levels of core biomarkers of neurodegeneration within the brain. How is this data then used to detect early signs of dementia or Alzheimer's? So this is uh, to detect impairment due to uh, neurodegeneration. So uh, the test that I just described uh, uses um, the, uh, the, a, a mechanism in the brain uh, that uh, pr process information and particular visual information uh, in order to mark uh, the, the earliest uh, changes in the brain. So uh, to put it in a simple uh analogy what we have done here uh we are looking at the cpu of the brain where we process information and particularly visual information and the time it takes us to uh analyze and process this information uh drops in time when we get older but it drops a lot quicker when there is neurodegeneration due to uh, uh, Alzheimer's, for example. So we can detect this uh, by, by having uh, the data on normative uh, population. So we know how healthy people behave and we know how people with the condition behave and our AI engine can map the performance of that particular user or test taker versus uh, the historical data. And with a high probability say this person is healthy or unhealthy. Last month, the company was granted FDA clearance from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the distribution of its integrated cognitive assessment tool. Can you walk us through the process and what this means for the company? Absolutely. Basically, simply, it means that we can market the product in the, in the entire United States. Um, we uh, can use the product for uh detecting uh cognitive impairment due to uh the the, the basic knowledge degeneration in general and uh it's uh, it's a huge milestone for us because from day one when we started the journey uh, us was our top priority um the size of the market to the side uh you have a very competitive uh market uh where uh, they want to show uh, better uh, performance um, and uh, they're very open to innovation. Uh, and we saw that in a, in a huge uh, demand. Uh, it's, it's an interesting story that when we announced this in our press release overnight, we had close to 1,000 inquiry. Uh, I thought that we've been hacked because um, it has happened before. Uh, some Chinese hacker uh, put a lot of traffic on your website and uh, when you have a press release and next time you're going to have a press release they tell you you need to give us a ransom i thought that we've been hacked uh but when we when we look deeply we realized no these are all uh, legitimate uh people some small clinics a uh, few doctors some uh bigger names institutions in the us such as kaiser permanente uh, Providence, uh, Veteran Administration. Uh, so um, 
all our assumptions around U.S. market uh, and opportunity uh, came to reality uh, when uh, we had overnight 1,000 inquiries coming in. You also have an app called OptiMind, which functions as an individual data collection tool, generating personalized insights and recommendations. For consumers, what does this app have that the current market doesn't? So this is this is very interesting. This is a product that we built. It was a back of envelope proof of concept uh, project that we started working on when we were waiting uh, to receive uh, to complete that clinical trial. So we couldn't do anything else. We started working on uh, this product, and the idea there was that uh, why don't we give a tool to general public in order to monitor their brain health? Not a clinical product that you need to do it in, uh, in, in, in a clinical setting, but something that we give it to everyone, uh, not only people who are at risk, but people who want to monitor themselves, uh, brain health, their cognitive health. And also on top of that, they can see how their lifestyle choices have an impact on their uh, cognitive health. So the uh technology collect information from other sources such as your um, apple health kit and uh, give you a holistic holistic view of uh, what happens with your body and brain when you take the test over time it also builds a knowledge around what are those factors that can improve your brain health more than others so we've done some trials that it shows for example some people uh can be quite um receptive to uh, the, the number of hours they sleep and uh, that has a direct impact on their brain health or some on, on level of exercise that they do. And uh, this can be fed back to uh, users and they can have a personalized approach into, uh, into uh, improving their brain health by reducing those factors that can have a negative impact and uh, increasing the ones that have positive. In June, the FDA greenlit Biogen's new Alzheimer's drug, the first new Alzheimer's drug in 18 years. How closely are you following this development? Uh, very closely, uh, because uh, the important uh, caveat here is that the drug has been approved uh, for, uh, for Alzheimer's for the first time, and it's for the first time a drug that can modify uh, the treatment. Uh, but it can do it only uh, on MCI or mild cognitive impairment patients. This is uh, the very early stages of uh, disease uh, development. And our technology is tuned to pick up those patients. We can do that at scale. We can do it very simply. We can do that remotely. Uh, we can do that independent of culture, language, and education. So we can deploy our technology in Asia uh, tomorrow if you want. And this makes it a powerful tool to find those who need to be on this uh, treatment, uh, which is a huge, huge unmet need at the moment, uh, because uh, the system is not designed to pick people at early stage. Uh, when we started years ago, people were telling us why you need to pick up people so early. There's no need for this. But now that we have this treatment, uh, all of that, uh, all of those questions are answered very, very uh, clearly. So do you think early detection could have an impact to its possible cure? Absolutely. Uh, no question. Uh, no doubt. Uh, there is, you can do, it's been proven with a lot of literature, a lot of data, longitude and all on thousands of people that your lifestyle will have an impact on your brain health and people have managed to suppress genetic factors of, uh, of Alzheimer's by taking the right lifestyle, right lifestyle choices. But now on top of that, we have drugs that have got approval. Uh, Aducanumab of Biogen is just the beginning. Uh, we have um, Roche and Eli Lilly, every drugs with very positive phase two uh, results. And we expect in 2023, you will have more than one or two um, uh, drugs that can modify the disease. From your perspective, what do you think are the current major hurdles related to curing Alzheimer's? Do you think that it's right to make this a global health priority? 
Uh, absolutely, it is. Uh, just before uh, before COVID hit, it was the biggest uh, healthcare challenge of 21st century by WHO, World Health Organization. Uh, and that problem is still there, and it's even uh, further uh intensified because um all uh patients have not been looked at for the last uh, two years uh elderly people could not go to clinics because that was a huge uh life uh risk um and health risk uh, and as a result we, we had a very bad diagnostic rate which has become worsened and um this is uh this is a, a huge problem uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, but now we've taken FDA decision in approving um, uh, aducanumab. It uh, was a great step towards uh, tackling this huge crisis. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, so lastly, what should investors be looking out for with Cognitivity as we head into 2022? Uh, commercial uh, traction and uh, there is, uh, we've done all the hard work. It's, 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 it's not right to say this, but uh, we've done all the uh, research development approvals. And now it's time for us to go out, uh, get those deals, get the product uh, to be used at scale, bring in revenue, build on top of that, and become the de facto cognitive assessment that is used globally anywhere you need to take a cognitive test from a patient. Well, Sina, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing the updated story with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow with more awesome content. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell.